Today, we are going to compare app development technologies to appreciate their advantages, disadvantages, and performance. We are going to be exploring three different technologies, which are Flutter, React Native, and Native Android. So let's get started. First of all, a couple of quick notes. First, most of these performance tests are going to be developed on my phones, which are a Samsung Galaxy Note 3 and an iPhone 5S, since these are the devices that I own. Uh, I know these aren't the greatest and latest phones, but I will try to do my best to make this video. Second, all the apps were tested using the release, build, and installed on the device, so the experience is the same as an application being used on production. Third, I got this idea from a great Fireship video in which essentially he makes a to-do app on different web frameworks, so I thought it would be cool to make this idea on mobile frameworks as well. I saw the to-do app design on a tech leads video, so credits for all these great people. So first we have React Native, which I think is one of the most popular frameworks for mobile app development these days. It was super easy for me to get started with it, since I already know a little bit of React and JavaScript and I was already familiar with this framework and environment. I decided to use Expo, which is a closed JavaScript environment in which developers don't have to worry about writing native code, which was super nice for me. I wanted to use material design. So I decided to use React Native Paper, which essentially has all the material components like buttons, app bars, and dialogues already built for me. So taking a quick look at the code, you can see it is pretty simple, especially if you already know like React, this is a piece of cake for you. Basically, I am using React hooks like use state to update the to-do list array and add or remove the item. So as you can see here, is the result and it honestly looks and feels pretty good on Android. As you are seeing right now, the startup uh, time is about 4 seconds and the app size is of 116 megabytes on the device. I want to point out that I tried the app on iOS and I noticed that the keyboard pass was overlapping with the text dialog, which was a bug that I found was documented on the React Native paper GitHub since some time ago. So I think that I could probably fix it and I'm sure that I'm doing something wrong on React Native paper, but overall I think that this is not the framework's fault, so it will say it is okay anyways. So next we have Flutter, which was a little bit harder for me to get started with since I didn't know that much about Dart, but after some time I got used to Dart pretty easily since I already knew JavaScript and they are both similar. I was really impressed that the Flutter already has pre-built components which are easy to use and it was fantastic. However, I feel that in for some parts like while making a stateful widgets, I was kind of writing in a different manner than in React, but I think that all the overall experience was great. The code is also pretty simple and as you can see, Flutter uses widgets to build UIs and it also has the set state function to update components. Overall, I felt that Flutter was a great experience. So as you can see, here is the result and it honestly looks and feels pretty good on Android. And as you are seeing right now, the startup time is about two seconds, which is like half of React Native's startup time. And the app size is also about 28.8 megabytes on the device, which is also very less compared to React Native. So overall, I think that Flutter may be a little bit faster and I still think that Flutter is great. I like it. Finally, we have native Android development. For this one, I am not using Jetpack Compose and I probably should have done that since this project was very small and simple. But overall, I felt that some packages and libraries like Glide, ExoPlayer and all that stuff weren't completely available yet on Jetpack Compose since it is very new. So I went with the traditional XML for this. I have to say that it took me a lot of time to make this app compared to the other frameworks and I think there are a few reasons. First, as I said, I did not use Jetpack Compose, but furthermore, as you are seeing, the implementation took a lot of line of codes. And I think that was primarily because I was using Java, which is known for having a lot of boilerplate. And I had to use a recycler view to make the list and that stuff was really hard for me. Plus, I wasn't used to the XML approach and I had to learn all these new ways to make the layout like relative layout, linear layout and all this stuff, which was a little bit difficult for me. Overall, I still think that native 
Android development is great, but I couldn't find as many tutorials for things on YouTube in comparison with the past frameworks, so it was hard. Plus, there was no hot reload, so I had to reinstall the app every time I wanted to test it. As you're seeing right now, the startup time is about only one second, which is super fast, and the app size is now only 4.27 megabytes on the device, which is shockingly good. So overall, I was really impressed with the great performance, and I think that Jetpack Compose can make under development better for developers in the future. Finally, as you are seeing right now, their startup times are way better on native code. And I still think that native is the best way to develop a performance oriented app. However, you may prefer using React Native if you already know React or Flutter if you want to have a little bit more performance than React Native and to still be able to develop a cross platform app. Overall, I think that these are all great tools, but each of us have to decide which one to use depending on the project needs. So that's it for the video and thank you guys.